Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three for the week of December 18th, 2023. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.10 to 7 a.m., normally for a discussion between the two of us about our top three oil or fiscal issues for the week. But this week, our last of the year, and what Michael calls the holiday edition, is a little different from the others. Instead of our usual approach, we pick three topics that are in keeping with the Christmas and holiday spirit. This year, they are these. In the first segment, we talk about our favorite Christmas plays, concerts, and movies. In the second, we discuss our most memorable Christmas presents. And in the last, we discuss things we have thought about doing for New Year's, but haven't yet. For those interested in our usual topics, we post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the project's page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. And keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. But for now, something different. Let's join Michael. Normally, Brad Keithley, uh, normally he has got uh, no problem coming up with three things that are political. I mean, usually he has to probably weed them out and, you know, figure out he's got three. But I said, Brad, no politics. It's all Christmassy stuff. And uh, I think it was a challenge. I think it was a big time challenge. Let's see what he has to say. Good morning, my friend. How are uh, how are you doing today? What's happening? Michael, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm on location uh, in New York, so uh, I've got the hotel or the my my hotel room in the background. Oh, well, look uh, at you, man. It's fancy, fancy. I mean, it's all good. It feels very wintry, silvery wintry in your hotel room. It looks good. <laughs> Christmas in New York. That's got to be an interesting. Uh, that's got to be an interesting uh, uh, gig. Uh, uh, what a fun time. Well, I enjoy. Uh, I enjoy doing it. Um, uh, I've done it for a number of years. It'll, it'll in fact be on my Christmas top three in, in one of the categories that, okay, that you okay. made that, that you made me create. I'm a bad uh, person. I mean, I'm just like, boy, I really, I like kind of beat you. Brad's like, not a single, no, Brad, not a single story about it. And he's like, okay, fine. Oh, man. Uh, was it really a struggle? I mean, was it hard to, because you're talking about your kind of personal stuff and everything else instead of, you know, pointing out the deal. Was it hard? Well, once you get into it, it was it was relatively easy, but it was just hard contemplating how I was gonna how I was gonna go about it. Anyway, yeah. uh, New York New York and Christmas is is great. It's actually fairly warm here. It's in the forties. Um, it, it's sort of like I approach New York at Christmas, sort of like I approach Las Vegas. I've I've gone to Las Vegas a number of times, but I've never put a dime down or never put a dime into a slot machine. I've never put a chip down on a table. I've never spun a wheel. Uh, I go for the restaurants and for the shows, uh, for the Cirque du Soleil shows. And that's sort of like how I approach New York. I, I'm not out there in the crowds, you know, elbowing my way down to Rockefeller Center or anything. I go for the restaurants and the shows. So that's it's that's Christmas to me in New York. Okay. Well, I could see that. I mean, I was... Uh... I found this app on my uh, <clears throat> on my Fire Cube the other day, this weekend. I was just kind of scrolling. I don't know. You know how it is. Sometimes you're just aimlessly scrolling through something. And I found this <clears throat> app on my Fire Cube, which was called World Cam or something. Anyway, it was basically 4K World Cams or uh, ca webcams from around the world, you know, kind of these different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one in New York at Times Square. And uh, I clicked on it and I was like, oh, no, thank you. There's like way too many people. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I just got hives looking at all the people in this one place. And I'm just like, oh, man, I'm sure it's beautiful. I'm sure it's a scurry, scurry, hustle, bustle. But oof, no, thank you. You know, but uh, hey. Oh, it's, great. It, 
it, it's great. Everything's everything's decorated. All the lights in Times Square are lit up. You know, Rockefeller Center's got the Christmas tree. It's got people down skating in 40 degree weather, but they're skating. Uh, you know, all the stores have their Christmas displays on it. It is it is beautiful, but there are a lot of people. Oh yeah, there there are probably there are probably more people in the in the block I was walking down than in all of Anchorage. So it's yeah, it's, was... it gets it gets a little a little intense. That's why for me it's the it's the restaurants and the shows. You know, Uber yeah. Uber from the hotel to the, to the restaurant, Uber from the restaurant to the show, Uber back to the hotel. Yeah, no, that's uh, that would be fun. All right, you know, I mean, you got to experience <clears throat> all of this stuff at least once, right? I mean, that that you got to do it at least once. You got to go experience all these things and check it out. All right, well, let's get into the weekly or the uh, the holiday edition of the weekly top three. Um, so, uh, where do we want to start? You got Christmas, your favorite Christmas plays, concerts, movies, your best Christmas presents. And the things you thought about for doing for New Year. So let's get started with your favorite Christmas plays, concerts, movies. You are a big music guy. I mean, I like music, but you are like you are like the music. You want to go see live music. It's one of your passions. You want to go see concerts and shows. So give us uh, hit us with it. Hit us with number one here. Here we go. So so the best Christmas concerts I've ever gone to uh, were in Boston. Uh, they were put on by. Uh, uh, a friend by the name of Brian O'Donovan, who is a big presence in Boston, a big presence in the Celtic music scene. Uh, Brian produced uh, uh, a Christmas uh, Celtic sojourn uh, every year, uh, had a number of uh, performances in Boston and the surrounding area. And he'd bring in performers from the U.S., from Scotland, from Ireland, uh, and just really put on an old-fashioned uh, Christmas show with with traditional music from Chris, from from the Celtic from the Celtic world, and I learned a lot about that about the Celtic Celtic music uh, uh, in that show. Uh, he would he would link together um, uh, Scotland and Ireland and Appalachia old time uh, uh, what we call old time music, but but is really just Celtic music that came into America. Link them together. Some years he would have. Uh, a group from Scotland, a group from Ireland, and a group from that played Appalachian mu music, all do the same song that had been handed down through the through the centuries from one to the other to the other, and 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 modified to to fit the times and to fit the place uh, as they went. And it was always fascinating to to see the differences between uh, the different uh, Celtic styles uh, that that he put on. He always uh, he always had a Christmas story read. Uh, on stage, sitting in a chair next to a fireplace—not a real fireplace, but next next to a fireplace—and sort of, you know, it was like the the Christmas Eve story. Um, they always sang "Old Ag Syne at the at the end, which is a traditional Scottish song, um, and it was it was just a great uh, a great experience uh, with with Brian. Unfortunately, for a lot of reasons, Brian passed this past year. Uh, and with him uh, has passed the uh, Christmas Celtic uh, sojourn tradition, so I'm missing that this year. But I'm sort of I'm sort of still practicing part of it because what I do is go to Boston and go to a couple of the shows, uh, and then come down to New York and see some theater, and then come back uh, home. And um, and so I'm I'm doing the New York part uh, this year with some friends who I developed over the years up in Boston. But it was just. It was just a great, great way to really get in the Christmas uh, Christmas spirit. Another well, great Christmas. I'm go sorry. ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that sounds fantastic, and I'm so sorry for the passing of your friend. That's you know, it's hard uh, as we're getting older, we lose some of those traditions. That's, uh, but we keep them in our hearts, right? So we we certainly do, and and we've had a couple of drinks to Brian uh, while we've uh, while we've been on this trip. So it's um, uh, it's. It, it, it's a great memory to have. I mean, it, it can't be renewed, can't be refreshed, but it's a great, great memory to have. Another, uh, another great Christmas tradition that I've done in the past is to go see uh, a Cape Breton group, uh, the Barra McNeils, which is a Celtic, again, a Celtic group, uh, and they do a cross Canada tour at Christmas time. Call it, it's called they call the show the East East Coast Christmas, the Maritimes Christmas, 
Um, and it's it's their tradition, their tradition of, of Celtic music that came from a lot of Cape Breton was settled by people from Scotland. So it's Scotland come to that particular part of Canada and they cross through Canada. Great show, uh, really raises the Christmas spirit, spirit, great family. Uh, it's really a family uh, a tradition and a family show. And I've seen that a number of times along the way. And it's always, uh, it always sort of is, is a great way to get into the Christmas spirit. And then the third one, the, the best Christmas concerts, the third one, uh, I started uh, this year. Uh, I went down to Seattle to see Mannheim Steamroller, <laughs> who oh, wow. I'd not seen in concert, in wow. concert before. And, um, and they and they do an annual Christmas tour. They came and they were in Seattle. Uh, I happened to be going through Seattle and I, and I, you know, sort of decided to do that. And it was great. I mean, it's like, it's like the Mannheim steamroller playlist on, on, on the stage. Right. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of vocals. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's just fun to watch all of the performers, you know, playing their various instruments. Um, and they've got some strange ones in Mannheim stream steamroller, but it, but that, uh, I think that's become a new favorite, uh, uh Christmas concert as well. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Uh, I remember seeing rushes from a Mannheim steamroller concert and then a, it was like a juxtaposition with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra as well. That mm -hmm. would sound like one that would be an amazing, uh, an amazing trip. <clears throat> that would be, I mean, that would be great. Uh, and that's the kind of music you can definitely, I, I don't know, everybody, I think everybody, uh, that crowd must be amazing to be in a crowd like that. <laughs> There, you know, it's just there for the, you know, we're not all flicking our Bic lighters and holding up and winding it up and, you know, getting all rowdy. This is just a, a concert of people who are there for the Christmas spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and they dress that way. I mean, the Mannheim steam roller crowd, I wasn't really familiar with this, but they dress up. I mean, they dress up in all their Christmas finery and they some have lights flashing on their heads. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, it, uh, it's, Think of Rocky. You think of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. People going to the Rocky Horror Picture translated to translated to Christmas. I mean, they're, oh, they're putting their their Christmas finery on as opposed to the stuff they put on. You're for Rocky saying Horror. there was a whole lot of ugly sweaters going on. <laughs> there were there were there, there would have been a major contest uh, 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 for that. Um, and and in Boston for for Celtic Celtic Sojourn. People would dress up in, you know, sometimes in tuxes and they'd dress up and dress. It, it was really, they treated it as a major event. And that was, I mean, that helped get in the Christmas spirit. That, that sets uh, the mood, doesn't it? That sets the mood for anything you're doing, depending on how people treat it, you know, like that. That definitely is a is a great thing for it. Uh, Brad, yep. before we go to break, um, what would you suggest to somebody who's like, I've always wanted to go to a to do something for Christmas like this, an event, a concert, or is there a one thing for us for a beginner that you're like, do this, this would be, you know, this would be the thing. What do you think? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest Mannheim uh, steamroller in Seattle. I mean, they come through every year. I'd never done it before, but it was a great event. Great music. It's not something that I would, I, I wouldn't go out of my way to see Mannheim any other time of the year. Uh, but that's, that's sort of it. From from the from a concert standpoint, from a theater standpoint, uh, I saw Dickens' A Christmas Carol when I was in Seattle, also, and you can see that all, almost any place. Any a lot of places have have productions of that, and I love uh, 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 Dickens' A Christmas Carol. In fact, one of my favorite Christmas movies is Scrooged, which is Bill Murray's <laughs> late '80s movie about that's the that's the Dickens' yeah. Christmas Carol. Yeah. Um, and I, and I love that Carol, you know, about, about looking at your past, seeing your present and looking at the potential of your future. I just love that theme, uh, particularly around Christmas time and, and, and any production, any live production of a Christmas Carol or Bill Murray screen, any live production of a Christmas Carol sort of gets, gets me in that spirit. Well, there's a reason that that story has prevailed for 200 years. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it, it's, it resonates with people. I think it definitely, uh, makes it, uh, makes it good. I definitely, uh, would love to see a big Christmas concert like that. It's just, it, I don't know. Sometimes it's like, I can't be my people said, somebody said the other day, I mentioned something about, yeah, I'm going on vacation for the rest of the year until the new year. And they're like, Oh, where are you going? And I was like, my couch. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend a lot of time. I'm not going to leave the house for a week, you know, or something. I don't know. Sometimes it's just, you know, you got to slow down, but man, it would be cool to see Mannheim or, or trans Siberian or something like that. Uh, it'd be fun to go take a trip like that. Uh, during the, I've never flown during the holidays, never, ever. Fl- well, <laughs> Maybe when I was a kid, I guess, we, well, we went ahead of time and I guess, so it, not technically during the holidays, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it, that's got to be an experience in and of itself, kind of traveling during the holiday season. It, it is. I, uh, I flew, uh, flew from Chicago to, uh, to New York, uh, sometime this week, Thursday, I, I, I'm losing track of days here. Um, but yeah, I flew, I flew, uh, uh from uh, Chicago to New York, and I really expected it to be bad. the The key to me is to not have uh, do carry ons. Don't have any luggage. You have to uh, you have to give give over to the airlines. Do carry ons and go early. Uh, and and anymore in major airports, Anchorage, you know, major airports. There's uh, there's things to do in the airport. There's restaurants. There's you know things you can do. You can get on your phone. Get do. I mean, there's Wi-Fi and you can do that. So it really is not that bad a thing to go early. And if you go early, um, you sort of lessen the tension level. And, you know, if the TSA line's a little bit long, eh, so, you know, I got plenty of time. And and it's just, I, that's that's the key to me. Um, oh, don't, but, don't tell me you're not pre-check. I mean, come on, tell me, don't tell me you're not I'm, pre-check. Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pre-check. I'm pre-check. I'm pre-check. But there are, <laughs> there are long TSA lines. I, I went to, I forget where it was. I was in Seattle. And the pre-check line was longer. Well, th- it happens in Anchorage sometimes too. The pre-check line was longer than the regular line. Oh. I mean, we've got we've got so many people with pre-check anymore. It's not yeah. true over Christmas. The, the regular line was longer, uh, but pre-check was still pretty long. Pre-check was sort of the wait. So, yeah. but just go early and just you know just sort of well, mellow out as you go. You're through. right. I mean, you can Netflix and chill in the airport, right? I mean, you could slap some documentary on or some funny movie or whatever, or just hang out and listen to an audiobook. I've always, uh, my wife, she's just like, she hates to travel with me because I'm just, again, I'm a, I have a little problem with authority. I don't know if you know, know that about, <laughs> but every time I go through every time, Every time I go through an airport, I just get, I just get pissy. I just get mad. It's just, it's just an internal thing. I, I I comply with everything, but I just, my wife's just like, oh, she's like, sometimes you're just so agitated. And I'm like, yeah, I'm agitated because I feel like a cattle in a cattle processing plant. But uh, yeah, no, going early definitely helps. Drink one of my rum smoothies before you go, Michael. (laughs) I I finally got my recipe up for this year. And and instead of the wine smoothie, I I have the strawberry banana rum smoothie that I drink over weekends. And drink a couple of those. You'll be you'll be fine. You'll be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I should because I'm never driving when I get there. I always take that, you know, whatever the, the bus or the shuttle or whatever. So. Yeah, maybe next time that'll be like I'll be consuming my wine smoothie as I get ready to go through the check. <laughs> uh, it'll be uh, it'll be fun stuff. Oh yeah, I could I love Christmas music and um, um, and you know you I I actually was looking for that actually came up in one of my top. I was doing some searches uh, to to do some show prep, and one of the top searches was the or one of the top. Uh, I'm sorry, Christmas music cert was um the celtic women that there's a whole thing oh, yeah. Celtic women yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and i was like man i've got to add some of those to my playlist because there are some yeah. amazing there's a ama- some amazing stuff out there for that it is the christmas edition of the weekly top three brad keithley grudgingly no he wasn't grudgingly he came up with something that was the it was christmasy i was like i just can't and it was hard but he did it and he's came uh, he's come up with it it's the weekly uh, Christmas edition of the weekly top three. Uh, we just talked about music and and movies. He said his favorite movie is Scrooge, right? We I guess did we get that out of the way for Christmas? Scrooge. Well, there's there's a couple others that are on the list. Scrooge is certainly there. I love Scrooge. I'll just laugh all the way through it every right. year. Yeah. Uh, probably my all time favorite Christmas movie is Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, the old the the original edition, the one with right, Natalie right. Wood. Yeah. Um, and um and and that always you know puts me in the mood i've always got to watch that every year 
And then, of course, it's a wonderful life because, you know, we got savings and loans and we got money. And <laughs> Man, that movie, we start, my wife and I, we were doing something the other day and I'm like, let's just start this, you know, and, and we watched like the first 25 minutes of it. And I was like, we got to come back. I stopped and I'm like, we got to come back to the kids. I mean, I'd already had a tear in my eye, you know, like twice in the first 25 minutes of that movie. It's so, it's just so great. Such a great movie. Uh, really up there. And uh, we, and of course, White Christmas is another one for music and things mm -hmm. like that. Music and dance and, and everything. That's a great one. But let's, uh, let's talk about your favorite Christmas presents. Uh, so let, let, you, you hit me with this. I'm, I'm interested. I mean, was it analytical books? Was it uh, a slide rule, a new slide rule for Brad? I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> if, if, we always think of Brad and these dry <laughs> spreadsheets and numbers. And somebody gave him the premium edition of Excel spreadsheets. He was excited about it. what. Uh, what do you got here? That that may that may be. I may may, may need to rethink all this. <laughs> my my favorite Christmas present of all time was a total surprise, total shock. Uh, someone gave me a, a, a good friend gave me tickets uh, to Santa Fe. Flight to a flight to Santa Fe and lodging uh, for New Year's. Uh, I'd never done that before, and Santa Fe for a while uh, was a favorite location of mine. It's sort of like Scotland is now, but Santa Fe or Cape Breton is now. But Santa Fe, I'd never I'd never gone for New Year's, and Santa Fe at New Year's is just magical. I mean the the Feralitos, the, the the lights that they that they have around the plaza, the 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 feel of the shops and the stores, the feel of the city, the feel of the museum, the feel of the music, uh, that was just that was just wonderful, and that's that is the most memorable uh, uh, Christmas present um, that I ever got. It was just a total surprise and and, and a total total joy. Yeah, to, you uh, don't think of you don't think of Santa Fe as the destination for New Year's, but they really do it up right, huh? They have great restaurants. Uh, I was there. That's where I spent New Year's 2000 or 1999 turning to 2000. You know, I figured if the world was going to end, I might as well, you know, <laughs> for Y2K, someplace. for Y2K, he's in Santa Fe, just in case. Right. <laughs> and 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 there's a there was a restaurant there at the time, may still be there, Coyote Cafe, which which was just a wonderful restaurant. And they had a New Year's celebration, New Year's dinner, and that's that's and that's sort of, you know, where I ended up as a result of uh, of that present. The the present had been several years earlier, but once I got that and once I saw Santa Fe at Christmas, uh, that became sort of my go to destination for uh, for Christmas uh, for for a number of years. So that that's the most memorable. Second most memorable. <laughs> this this is a horrible story, but but the second most memorable. <laughs> he prep <laughs> He's prepping you all. He can't stop you know, putting you guys in, you know, getting you down, but it's all, it's a horrible story, but it'll be, it has a great ending. Go ahead. Uh, so you want to, it's got an ending about me, I guess. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the second was uh, when I was really young, I was a big football fan, big green Bay fan, in fact. And for, for a couple of years, uh, I think all I wanted was a football uniform, you know, the, the Jersey and the, and the right. pads and the, and the, and, because we used to play a lot of sandlot football when I grew up, and uh, and having a uniform would have been having pads would have been would have been advantageous. So I was just I was just oh I, I, th that was that was the Christmas present that from from my childhood that I just really you know remember wanting a lot, and I got it one year, and uh, and it was it was wonderful. It was red, uh, new helmet, uh, uh, red jersey, red red pants uh pads you know shoulder pads and and pads in the legs and i liked it so much that i didn't wear it because i didn't want to get it dirty <laughs> <laughs> so i what? wanted this i wanted this uniform for all these years so i could go out on the sandlot football and have a uniform and be you know big time it and, and then i didn't didn't want to get it dirty Finally, finally, my mother talked me into uh, into putting it on one year, and I'd outgrown it. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! 
Plus, I could imagine you showing up at Sandlot football in full pads and gear and helmet, and the guys would be like, "Don't let us, don't let him hit you, because he will hurt you." <laughs> no, I was, I no, I was the scrawny, scrawny little kid. I was, I, they would pads wouldn't have bothered them at all. They would have just sort of chuckled at it. But that was yeah. fine. I would have felt better about it. Uh, but uh, but but it was it was a lesson in um, in enjoy your presence when you get them or enjoy life as right. you live it. Don't put it on a shelf and say, oh, no, I don't want to wear that because it's going to get dirty. One day, uh, one day I'll use that one day. And then that day passes <laughs> and you're like, crap, man, crap. That's crazy, crazy. Oh, and then, yeah. and then the best memory, the best childhood memory is, is, and it wasn't a Christmas present, but it was Christmas, Christmas related. Um, all the family used to gather, um, my grandparents and, and my parents and, and um and so you, they wanted to preserve the myth of santa claus excuse me the actuality of santa claus anyway they wanted to preserve santa claus for as long as they could so um what we would do on christmas eve is we would all gather we'd have dinner and all that sort of stuff and we opened our presents on christmas eve um so to set everything up they they needed to get me out of the house i guess right um and and so we would take a drive to go look for Santa and the reindeer and look at Christmas lights um, uh, around around town and uh, or around the county, actually, because we didn't have that many in our little town. We had to sort of travel a little bit to see some. Um, and miracle, miracle of miracles, by the time we got back, Santa had come and, and oh, I'd missed him and you know, the wow. reindeer, all that. How did I miss him flying through the sky? I mean, look at he, but, he's early. It's still daylight. What's going on? It, uh, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> but it was it, it, it's a great Christmas memory because my father would. I, I my memory is that my father would and grandfather would take me out and uh, we'd go look for Christmas lights and go look for uh, uh, for the reindeer. And that's you know I whenever I think of family, I think of I think of Christmas. When I think of growing up, I think of Christmas a lot, the holidays a lot, uh, and I think of that particular uh, the, uh, habit of ours, that particular tradition of ours. Right, to get the kid out of the house and make him go look for Santa up in the sky. That's fantastic. That's 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 really great. I mean, I remember this wasn't an every year thing, but I remember quite a few years when I was younger, probably in my early teens. Um, there was probably a handful of years there where my dad would, um, on Christmas Eve, like the day of Christmas Eve, he was self-employed. So he was like, you know, he, he would have that, that, that day or so off and he would take me and my brother. So this must've been either when my young or my old, the older of the two younger sisters was either uh, just a baby or, or anyway, he would take us Christmas shopping for mom on almost on Christmas Eve. Now guys, it took me about five years to break that habit. Okay. Because <laughs> five years of being, because I thought, oh, this is great. I'll just keep doing that. And trust me, going out on Christmas Eve to buy a bunch of Christmas gifts for your wife, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, just, but I do remember it. And it was fun, you know, and it was fun. And we'd hurry scurry and go do things and, uh, and, and get some things. Like I said, it wasn't every year, but it was probably a four or five year period there. And I do remember that. And I kind of picked up that habit for the first few years of my marriage until I realized, oh, it'd be much nicer to spend that time at home. <laughs> and so I figured that out. But yeah, you know, there's, there's just some things that we love. And that time with, uh, especially with my dad, because my dad wasn't, uh, he was very busy. He traveled a lot. He wasn't around uh, when I was growing up as much. And so to spend just that day or two with him, that was definitely, uh, uh, that was definitely a highlight of my Christmas season to be able to hang out. So it's good to remember those kind of things for sure. I think we all have Christmas traditions like that. I mean, they may be a little screwy, like, you know, you know shopping on Christmas Eve or, right. or going, going out, driving around and looking for Santa up in the sky and, and looking at Christmas lights in, in other towns. They may be a little odd, uh, but there, there are traditions and there are memories and they are what trigger our a sense of Christmas and our and and bringing us into the Christmas spirit. So, you know, it, everybody's got everybody's got a peculiar one. Santa Fe wouldn't be one for everybody. You know, yeah. football uniform, football uniform never worn wouldn't be one. But but it's what triggers it for each for each of us. 
Okay, I'm going to sidebar for just a second. If you have, if you are, the, you mentioned the football jersey, which just triggered me. We just finished putting together a Christmas gift list for a hundred plus foster teens in Anchorage. One of our radio stations was doing a promotion where listeners adopted a foster teen, and it was a, I mean, it's amazing the giving spirit of the people in this community. Let me just say how amazing the people in Alaska are. Um, for a hundred and something kids, we we probably gathered all, over ninety thousand dollars worth of stuff oh my gosh. for these kids. It was an amazing thing. But I, I had to laugh. One of the kids asked for a jersey. It was an Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles jersey, and uh, the gal brought everything in, and she had everything. And I was like, <clears throat> "Wow." And she said, well, here's the receipts for everything, just in case something doesn't fit. And I just looked down and I went, I was like, oh, I thought this jersey was going to be 50 or 60 bucks. And she's like, yeah, this 15-year-old kid had asked for a jersey that was $180 for this football jersey. I'm like, that's an expensive hobby. Being a sports fan, apparently, is not a cheap date. <laughs> So it was, but you know, Hey, everybody got a, everybody got a happy Christmas and, uh, and he'll be wearing that with pride or putting it up on the, I mean, something like that. You just put it up under glass on the wall. I, I don't know what you do with it, but I'm pretty sure that my Christmas, my entire Christmas football gear, plus everything else, oh, everybody oh, yeah. else got that year wasn't $180, but no, yeah, but maybe in today's but, dollars, I mean, you are fairly um young or not as young as you <laughs> be. I mean back then a back then a brand new car cost four thousand dollars Brad right I mean yeah, come that's on. true that's true that's true I, my <laughs> mother may my mother may remind me after the show how how expensive that was and how uh, disappointed her. I, you wanted it why did you wear it <laughs> I was saving it for that special time you know <laughs> yeah uh, so are you going to uh, your mom? Are you going to spend a little Christmas time with mom on the way back up or what, what are you doing? I've, I spent uh, time with, uh, with my mother for the last few weeks, uh, between Thanksgiving and, uh, and, and, and her birthday, her birthday's on December 16th. She turned 91, uh, still in great shape, still in great, you know, uh, we went to the diner in my, in my hometown for, uh, for her 91st birthday dinner and um so i spent time with her uh, through uh through uh, uh through her birthday now i'm going to i'm going to spend christmas and new year's back in anchorage well that'd be good i mean it's just so you know it's it's uh the family the family is important we got uh, our son is coming over um our oldest son who uh, moved out about 8 months ago uh, he's going to come over and he's going to spend Christmas Eve. He's going to sleep over at the house on Christmas Eve for a Christmas morning start. And that's, it's hard. You know, we've got our, our grand, our oldest daughter is married. She lives all the way in Florida. <laughs> Oof. And <laughs> so we're, our granddaughter's over there. And so we just, you know, it's nice to have as much family around you as you can during the holidays and, uh, and to hang out and do stuff. They're already, they're not fighting, but they're all debating over what are we going to watch on Christmas Day? What are we going to do? What are we going to? We got some games we're going to play, and and somebody suggested I do a, a Christmas theme D and D something or you know, <laughs> we, we, you know we're just gonna have, you know, and I'm just like yes, yeah, Krampus is coming. He's he's got old Saint Nick captured and the goblins, and we're gonna, I don't know, we're gonna do something. It's gonna be some some fun. Uh, Jim said, boy, go ahead. That's about that's, that's about like making me uh, uh, do a Christmas top three, right? You know, you have to you have to do the a D a Christmas theme D and D. If you probably that's probably right up your alley. Oh, that'd be fun. I mean, that would be absolutely fun. Jim goes the extra miles. He said, "I pulled some old ashes out of the wood stove that Santa tracked through the house." That's some that's some dedication. Although I remember one year we took uh, one year we took uh, I had a big pair of boots and I made all these boot tracks. And then I had this thing that I made look like hoof tracks. And then I threw broken carrots and stuff outside. And we took the kids outside and was like, look, the reindeer, look at the thing. And here's the sleigh tracks. And here's Santa's boot prints. And look, there's a carrot broken here. And anyway, it was, <clears throat> we went to a lot of work that one year to, uh, to make it, uh, to make it, uh, to make the, the, the spirit of Christmas live on. Let's put it that way. So it's not that I think there's a bunch of kids listening to this, but uh, anyway, 
So, so Michael, do you play? Do you plan it, play Santa yourself? I mean, you got the beer oh, for it. You got the Lord. Somebody came in yesterday to drop some stuff off, and they were like, "Santa," and I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to do something. I might have to get some Grecian Formula 44 for the beard or something because I definitely, I know I could play Santa. I'm just like, ho, ho, ho. It's, uh, it, it, it. I was looking at pictures from about 10 years ago, and this was mostly brown about 10 years ago. Uh, and when you and I first got started, it was mostly a little salt and pepper, but not bad. And now it's like, I should just throw on a red jacket and walk around jiggling my belly is what I should do. That would be the, that'd be the, the whole deal. You'd be uh, a great one. I just, I just wondered if you, if you, if you did it, if you, if you took the opportunity at time. No, I, I, I've played Santa one time for charity. I did, uh, during a radio station thing here a few years back. Uh, Donna says you may want to go see the Nutcracker at the Rockefeller Center. That's uh, that would be a fun. That would, is that is that on your plan? I've seen the Nutcracker a number of times. I mean, we have it in Anchorage uh, around Thanksgiving always. Uh, it's not it's not on it's not one of my top three. Um, the Radio City Music Hall uh, is. is Usually on my top three, I usually go see the Christmas show there, so it's nearby. So, Brad, we are down to the last one of the Christmas top three, and this is your uh, this is New Year's things that uh, you've been things you've been thinking about doing for New Year's, but you just haven't yet, slacker. I mean, just haven't yet. It's uh, so. So, I mean, because it's always about, right, it's uh, you get the Christmas, the family time, and then you come up to the new year and you were talking about liking the whole story about, you know, the the the, the Christmas carol and, you know, the reflection on your past and where you are today and where you're going. And so, of course, New Year's is always about reflection about what's happening and what resolutions you're going to make. So what is it that you've been thinking about for New Year's, but uh, just haven't uh, haven't haven't done it? Well, there's certainly a theme going on here from the from the favorite Christmas concerts through, you know, favorite things, favorite Christmas presents. Um, one of the things I haven't done, I just haven't pulled the trigger on. Uh, in Scotland, New Year's, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve is called Hogmanay. And it's a whole tradition uh, around how they celebrate uh, the end of the year. It is, I've been told, it rivals, if not exceeds, uh, the the Scots' focus on Christmas Day. Uh, uh, that they that the celebration around Hogmanay is a, is is a bigger thing than even Christmas Day, and it's it's filled with traditional music, Scottish traditional music. It's filled with with various uh, various activities, and I've just there's not a way to duplicate it. Um, in the U.S., uh, Brian, uh, as part of Christmas Celtic so Sojourn, used to talk about it. He used to have a couple of songs uh, that celebrated Hogmanay uh, uh, as part of the show he did in Boston. But there's not a real good way to duplicate it uh, in the U.S. So one thing I haven't done that some year I'll pull the, pull the trigger on, and, and and I guess I ought to face up to the fact that maybe I'm running out of years to be able to do this, but. Uh, is uh, go over to Scotland for Hogmanay and celebrate uh, Hogmanay with uh, with my Scottish Scottish friends. And is that There's is something that, is that strictly on New Year's Day or is it leading up after Christmas? Is there like a lead up after Christmas Day or what? No, it's New, it's New Year's Eve Day and it continues over into New Year's Day. Um, and so the music, the concerts are all on uh, New Year's New Year's Eve Day. And so it's, uh, there's, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's something leading up to it. I mean, let's see, in Scotland, it's Christmas Day, and then the day after is Boxing Day or Ren Day, the day, Ren Day. And then there's a couple of other events during that week, and then and then Hogmanay. But everything is sort of leading up to, to, to Hogmanay. So um, it just, it, it's, it, it is, it is a traditional uh, celebration that has a lot of traditional music and a lot of uh, a lot of cool things. Even during COVID, even during the shutdowns of COVID, the Scots found a way to do uh, the Hogmanay to do a unique way of of, of celebrating uh, New Year's Eve Day and then New Year's Day. They did a drone light show, uh, filmed it and then broadcast it. It was like and it was set to music from a favorite group of mine called Nightworks. 
and it was they formed uh, a bunch of different things using the drones in the night sky and brought them brought the drones over Edinburgh started out the drones uh, over uh, the highlands uh, and the islands uh, in northern Scotland and then gradually shifted the 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 drones over to Edinburgh and then sell it, and then Edinburgh had lights on and over the bridge and and everything else. So it was even even during COVID, they found a way, a u- unique way. Scott's found a unique unique way to celebrate Hogmanay. So it's it's just a it's a it's a great its own tradition and uh, and something that uh, that you have to go there to, to to be part of. So that's that's yeah. one. It's on a bucket uh, list. That's a bucket list to get to. Well, maybe you should just book it now for next year and just stop <laughs> screwing around. Brad. Just, you want to get that under your belt and get it done. Uh, the drone thing with the drone, I've seen these, the drone swarms where they, they put yep. you know, 500 drones or something in the air and then they're all synchronized and choreographed with lights. Uh, there's been, I've seen some amazing Christmas. Uh, there was one that was the story of Christmas, you know, the star and then the thing and then the, the wise man. And I mean, it's amazing what they can what they can do uh, with that kind of thing. That that that's something that I would love to see would be a big uh, a big light show like that where they can play it out in the air in lights. Yeah, and they had it. They had it. You, you know, it was it was mostly white lights, but they had colored lights. I didn't really it had never focused on the fact you could do colored lights with drones. Um, and they they essentially told. The story of Scotland. I mean, they started in the Highlands and Islands about you know the, the long ago, and then brought it up to current times because they were celebrating, obviously the 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 next year, the new year, and 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 hit the celebration at the at the end of the show. Uh, but it was just uh, just a fascinating way to do it. I w- I wouldn't go to see that. I can see that on film, but but it just is. It's a demonstration that even during the COVID era, even during the shutdown era, they found a way uniquely to celebrate uh, right. New Year's Eve, Hogmanay, New Year's Eve Day, and then uh, and then the passing over to the next New Year's. It's it's interesting that uh, I was doing some reading on different you know different traditions around the around the world, and uh, <clears throat> it's amazing how in Europe. I mean, in America, it's like Christmas Day, uh, Christmas Eve slash Christmas Day, and then it's New Year's Eve slash Christmas uh, slash New Year's Day. But in Europe, I mean, there's like celebrations of, you know, 20 days, right? Starting on like the 12th of 11th, 12th of December, and then there's different things, and then they do. And they, I mean, it's like a two, three week uh, thing. I mean, it's not just Hanukkah. It's not just this. It's 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 all the different traditions of Christmas. Um, you know, Boxing Day, which I still don't understand the, de- I don't or still don't understand the origins of, but I understand what, you know, what it's about. But they've got all these different holidays in there. Uh, in America, we seem to have missed the boat on all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, we, we don't, we don't, we've not developed any of those traditions of our own. We carry some over. I mean, uh, there are some Boxing Day, day celebrations, not, not any that I'm aware of in Anchorage, but some down in the lower 48, the uh, the, the the Celtic part of it, the, the the music part of it, Boxing Day or Ren Day. So there's two different traditions. There's boxing. This is where you get into, you know, that the, the British Isles isn't isn't uh, isn't all one thing. So Boxing right, Day, great. yeah, Boxing Day is much more an English tradition, and it was when the Lord after Christmas Day uh, on Boxing Day, the lords would box up their old clothes. To give them to the to you know to hand them down to uh, to the people on their estates or uh, to others uh, in the community that was the origin of Boxing Day in uh, in Ireland and to some degree in Scotland Ren Day Ren Day's Ren Day's the really I mean Ren Day's the day after Christmas and that's a little that's a little different it is uh, kids in the community um, uh, finding an old Wren. <laughs> A dead wren, preferably, putting it on a, a stick and taking it around the community, dressing in, in costume, taking it around the community, and taking it to you know people's doors and knocking on the doors and and singing a song and and essentially asking for a donation, which then is the fun giving to the poor. But it's it's an odd way. It's I'm not sure what the what the origin of that was, but it's <laughs> it's it's highly celebrated. Has a bunch of songs that go with it. Uh, and is something that is common in Ireland and in Scotland. 
Yeah, walking around with a dead bird on the stick. That sounds about <laughs> right. That yeah, sounds about that sounds about right. That'd be interesting stuff. Uh, down to the last minute here, Brad. Uh, final wishes, final thoughts as we get ready to wrap things up. Well, Michael, as as painful as it was to prep to prep for this way, I, uh, prep for today, I think uh, I think it was it was good for me to go through the process of of the Christmas top three, and I and I won't fight it as hard <laughs> in the. Uh, in in future years uh it, it brought back a lot of good memories and a lot of uh, a lot of old traditions that uh, that my family used to engage in sometimes even you have to put the politics aside brad i just <laughs> i hate to say that but the good news is is that on our first day of broadcast in 2024 it'll be you it'll be the governor's budget we'll have plenty of things to talk about i'm sure <laughs> oh but i got the, a few things to say about that oh i'm sure you do but in the meanwhile just remember the reason for the season and thank you for coming on board and sharing with us. It's, it's fantastic. Brad sent me his list yesterday. And the first thing I said was, so was it harder than politics? And he's like, Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's, you gotta have a smorgasbord of stuff and just, you know, you just eliminate till you get three. I mean, on this one, it must've been harder. Well, I had a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry. And listed a bunch. Holy Brad, listed a bunch of things. Listed a Holy. bunch of things to the right, and then you know, put questions that seem relevant, and started dragging them up. Oh God, I love you so much. I just... <laughs> Holy Brad would have a spreadsheet for the, the Christmas top three. My friend, you are a gem. That is just amazing. <laughs> that is just amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is I, so definitely somebody needs to give him like the premium edition of Excel so he can get all the features in Excel to make it. The, to make it work. Oh, well, I don't think I, I don't think I need any more features. I've got enough. Got enough gizmos now. Yeah. Uh, if you give me more, it's just gonna it's just gonna confuse me. But uh, yeah. But but yeah, you know, I did, I did a spread. It was easy to do. I did a spreadsheet, and then you know, started categorizing stuff. So it was. Oh, that is so precious. You you would I I can't change character, Michael. I can change no. the subject yeah, of what no. I'm talking about, but I can't change character. No, that is fantastic, Brad. That is absolutely a you know, and I just appreciate it. I think it's I think it's fun. I just by this time of year. We just need to we just need to remember why we're why we fuss for the rest of the year. We need to remember why we do that. And that's what this is all about here. This is all about remembering why we do the things that we do. And again, having that reflection, you know, around the holidays and then into New Year's. You know, we, we gotta do it. But I'm telling you, Brad, we should get off this call and you should go book your trip to Scotland for next New Year's already. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, I, thank you. I, I just may, I just may, that may be the inspiration I need. You just should. I mean, why put it because, off? Because Remember? I'll already be, I'll already be in New York around this time of year. So it's just, you know, going on over. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll work on how well, to remember, that. remember the football gear. Okay, Brad, that's all I can say. Remember Ooh. the football. Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's, that's mean. <laughs> that's not mean. It's you were the one that said, "Remember, to don't put it on the shelf." And uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to find out that nothing fits anymore. You want to be able to enjoy it. So I would, uh, I would that's, go. That's through. that's a great insight. I, I don't feed you those, uh, those lines anymore. Don't, yeah, don't feed me that <laughs> stuff anymore. It's, if you don't want it to th be thrown back at you, don't feed it back to me. That's uh, that's fantastic. Well, but Brad, it's a, it, it, it's a great Brad, reminder. I mean, why not? You know, life is short. Eat dessert first, right? I mean, that's the whole that's the whole point. And if that's something you've really been thinking about, you might as well just might as well just book it all up and bundle it all up and be ready to go. That's what you should do. That's what you should do. Um, all right, Brad, last two minutes here. I'll give you the floor for whatever you want to talk about. Um, you know, a, a preview for New Year's or whatever, whatever. Just just give it all. Well, but I'm within the constraints of the holiday, you're, right? You're I can't, I, you could can tease, but let's not get into details, Brad. I'm trying to remain. I'm trying to keep my happy thought. Well, uh, when we get into the new year, the first show will be about the about the governor's budget. I've spent a lot of time 
uh, uh, doing that and are looking at it and analyzing it. And there's the, the big issue that strikes me this year is is a surprising one and uh, and one that I don't think anybody else has latched onto yet about what's going on in the budget. And uh, it's what it, so I'll talk about it. I will I will I will I will feature it in the in the first uh, first show of the year. But the remainder of the year, I'm going to take your instructions and I'm going to just enjoy the time, enjoy the top remaining time here in New York, enjoy the remaining theater that, that I've got here in New York, and then be back in Anchorage with uh, with friends there uh, uh, on Christmas Day and during uh, during Christmas week. You know, we got to remember why. We got to remember why we do it. This stuff will all still be here when we come back in January, right? I mean, it'll unfortunately, all, unfortunately it doesn't I'm, go away. We this is what is this, Brad? This is 10 years now. This is officially 10 years that we you and I have been fighting the battle together versus the other thing. It'll still be here next year. It'll still be here. We'll still be we'll still be doing it. Well, Brad, I hope you have a I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I hope you really it, just enjoy it and have a great time. Um, uh, I appreciate you for working with me all these years and doing all the stuff you do. And, and I just wish you the very best, best of Christmas and, and the holidays and the new years. Uh, give, give my love to your mom. Uh, you know, when you talk to her, just tell her, thank you. I know she listens to you. Uh, hopefully she's listening right now. Maybe she is. Uh, Mama Keith Lee, Merry Christmas to you as well. I hope you and Mary and happy birthday. I didn't realize it was your birthday. So happy birthday to you as well. Um, we just appreciate you guys. So thank you so much, Brad. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas to you and, and, uh, and Terry and the family uh, as well. I hope it's a great one for you. And, uh, I hope you, I hope your D and your Christmas D and D goes, goes scenario goes well. Well, yeah. Uh, and, uh, I just, I, have... I just, I go ahead. I just really, I, I just really hope you have, you guys have a great Christmas and I know you will. And I know you'll FaceTime with the granddaughter in uh, skip, skip over the daughter in Florida. You'll FaceTime with the granddaughter in Florida. Oh, so yeah. you'll, you'll have that connection. You know, you know, that's what's happening. It's going to be an immediate, we're going to take care of it. Um, all right. Well, Bradley, Merry Christmas, happy new year and, uh, enjoy the big apple and all the joys that you can out there. And then we'll see you when you get back here into, uh, into your hometown. Great, Michael. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, and Merry Christmas to you and, and everybody listening to the show, uh, uh, including my, including my mother who does listen and and will have smiled when you wished her happy birthday. So okay. Merry Christmas to everybody. All right, Brad. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you again soon. Well, that's a wrap for the final edition of 2023 of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, and keep track of us during the weeks ahead on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again in 2024 on the Weekly Top 3.